How are you doing everyone? So we're on to the next project now which is a ride on mower deck restoration. You can see I've got three lined up here. Obviously some are in uh, fairly bad condition um, and others are in not so bad condition. This one, this is the shell of one and this is the one I'm going to use um, for putting all the parts from these other two into. So you can see there's the spindle and the pulleys and the arms down there, the springs. What I'm essentially going to do is remove them out of this deck and possibly some from this deck as well and put them into this shell. Now this shell has half been primed, I started it a couple of years ago but then never got around to finishing it because I had another restoration project on the go. So <clears throat> um, you can see that it's got quite a lot of rust on. Now this rust is because I had not got around to finishing it off which is unfortunate because it meant that I had already ground the rust off in the first place and half primed it. Um, but then I never got around to finishing it, which means it's now rusted again. So yeah, essentially what I'm going to be doing here is just cleaning it all up again. This paint will probably get another layer on top, and then it'll be re-sprayed in the orange, which it was originally. Um, and then, providing these parts in here are in good condition, they'll be going into here. So pretty much what I'm going to be doing here is turning three decks into one really good deck. Um, so really it's just recycling the parts from all these and turning it into one very good deck. Um, and this will be going on a diesel lawn tractor. So this is the deck we're going to be stripping all the parts from. You can see that a pulley has already been removed and a few other things. Um, but essentially everything on here is going to be reused hopefully. Um, minus possibly the bearings. And if the bearings go after refurbishing it all then yeah, it's not going to be that convenient to get back in here because these decks are quite hard to get back into the centre of once you've rebuilt them all because it means removing all the pulleys, all this assembly in here and then you have to open up the bearing housing in there from the bottom and from underneath. They split in half and then you can get to the bearings inside. There's one below and there's one above. As I say, this is not going to be the shell that's used. You can see it's had a lot of welding jobs on here. There's a few holes in it. And I think in somewhere else there's a great big dent. Yeah, there's a great big hole in there as well. You can see down there. And it's had a lot of patchwork on there. Underneath, yeah, the blades have seen better days. Um, which will likely be replaced. Yeah, because look at that. There's not a lot of life left on that, if any. So that will all be replaced. So yeah. I don't know what will happen to the shell after it's been stripped down. Uh, probably used for parts or something. Um, but all that will be going on at the other deck. Time to get that deck in here. Now it's in the workshop, we can have a closer inspection as to what needs replacing. You can see that this brake here has completely had it. That should obviously be a lot fatter and chunkier, um, and that is so that when you put the turn the blades off, that should spring back and it should stop that pulley in its tracks. Obviously, that's not going to be doing that in the condition that's in. Uh, I think from past experience that the brake blocks on these decks are the first things to go um, because obviously, when you're stopping it like that from full speed, it's not going to be doing that brake pad an awful lot of good. I think that's probably why some people do recommend slowing the deck down a bit before you do put the brake on. The overall condition of this deck though is actually really good. All the cables are still in place, they're not damaged, they're not snapped, I can't see any signs of fraying on them, um, which is good because these things are quite rare and also quite expensive if you can get your hands on some. Um, the springs also are in very good condition which is good and as far as I can see they're all in place which also is going to keep the cost down. Now it's not that I'm trying to do this on the cheap, it's just I know that some of these parts can be really expensive and when you're spending over £100 maybe on just a deck to refurbish it um, then it can get a bit silly especially when you have all the parts to hand and you can just put them all in it's, that's why I'm doing this I'm just trying to turn three bad decks into one good deck so as I say one pulley was already removed and it was very very stuck onto the spindle Hopefully this pulley isn't going to be so bad. I've tried to move it and it does actually move a fair amount just by using your hands. I actually had to use a hydraulic puller to get the other one off and that was only just enough.
There's the two poles removed. Now I'm going to remove this centre brake arm, and that essentially is just used to put the brake on the pulley when you turn the deck off. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to remove that. I think it's a half inch bolt in there, and then I'm going to move on and remove the bearing housing. So that's all the bolts removed out of the bearing housing. Before I remove the spindle so I'm going to remove this back hanger and this is essentially what holds it onto the lawn tractor when you're cutting the grass. So that just hangs over the back. I'm going to remove this. Two of the bolts have already been removed at this end. There's only two left here. So when I've removed that I just have to undo the cables and this should come off. That's the first bearing housing removed and the spindle which runs through the middle and this is the second one which needs to be removed. Basically all I do here is use a copper hammer and knock that shaft through as far as I can get it and then the bearings will be visible. This will split in half then I can use a bearing puller to pull them off the shaft then everything will come out underneath. And that's the second bearing housing removed. This is the whole assembly and it goes like that. That part goes on the top and that goes up underneath and then they go together like that. The deck goes in between and then they're bolted together. So there's a bearing in there which I'm going to knock out and replace. There's then a spacer, it's like a bush which runs through here. That's in the centre of the deck. And then there's another bearing in there which I'm also going to remove and replace. Um, so now I'm just going to get my bearing puller and pull it off that shaft. So that's the general idea. You get the spindle and a bearing and the spacer and then the other bearing. And then on either side of that there is the bearing housing. So that's one of the spindles cleaned up as you can see here. I need to do the same to this other one. Um, and really the reason for this is to clean all of this off, all this dirt off. Because the bush which goes on there and the bearings get stuck um, onto this shaft. Time to clean the bearing houses. So what I'm going to do with these is pretty much just clean them down with a wire wheel. I've got this wire cup on the drill. I'm just going to go around it all and clear it all up. Okay, a progress update. So these bearing houses have gone from looking like this, all rusty and not very nice, to looking like this. Now, the two silver ones are the ones that go on top, because these were in better condition, so I've just used a wire wheel and removed all of the rust off these. And the two black ones are the two which went underneath, and these were in worse condition. They were more like this, even when they were cleaned up, um, although a lot of the rust had been removed. Um, so just as a protection for when they're underneath, I've painted these black. Um, so now you can see I've got a silver and a black, just to make it look smarter. These spindles have both been cleaned up, although I do need to still clean them up a bit more. But the majority of the rust and dirt has been removed. So they are almost ready to go back into the bearing houses when the deck shell has been done. These bushes, all the spaces for the bearings, are also cleaned up. Um, and I'm just waiting for two new bearings for each spindle which will go onto here, one will go on here, then there's the spacer in between, then another one on top, and then there inside the two bearing houses.
So the deck shell underneath has been drying overnight and that is touch dry at least now. In fact, it could be fully dry. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray all of the sides and all the top of this to make it look really smart. There we have it, that is the deck fully re-sprayed. And it's now ready to be reassembled. And I've got some new bearings just here. Four new bearings, which will be going in, because the old ones have had it completely. So if you're wondering how this assembly goes together, basically it's a bearing housing, this is one half of it, and that drops down into the centre of the spindle, like that and that's the part that goes underneath and then you've got a bearing, this is a new one and that goes down on the spindle right down to the bottom into the housing then you have the spacer which will then go over and it will sit about central on the spindle you then slot all of that spindle and assembly up and bolt it underneath the deck you then have another housing which goes on the top and inside that is another bearing pressed into there and then they will clamp together like that but only, obviously, closer together. And then this one presses into this top bearing housing. All I have to do now is bolt this whole assembly onto the deck shell and then that is the spindle sorted. And there we have it, that's the spindles and the bearings and the bearing houses all put in. Whole assembly is put together now. And I'll turn it over, see the bearings in the top, spindles are here. They spin perfectly now with the new bearings in. If I lift this up, you'll see the black houses in here and how easily these now spin. These were completely stuck before and they're making a grinding sound because the bearings go in. So now it's ready to rebuild the rest of the deck. Now onto the easier part of just attaching everything onto the deck. Uh, this includes the hanger bar and the height adjustment, the brake arm and this ID plate which I'm bolting on now which basically lets you know when it was manufactured and what it is. The deck height hanger bar is spring loaded and this makes adjusting the height a lot easier. Putting the deck back together is a lot quicker and easier than stripping it all down because everything has obviously been cleaned up and you can see that I have now fully reassembled that deck and this is what it looks like. Admittedly I did have to put this deck back together a lot quicker than I wanted to because you can see, this orchard needs cutting and this deck is what is required to do that. So yeah, I did put it back together quicker than I normally would, um, but it's just the way it was because we're now getting close to the peak cutting season and obviously it was needed. Thank <laughs> you. 
So in case you're wondering how these decks work on a Westwood, they're very simple and essentially all there is is a belt which drives two pulleys and then obviously two spindles with blades underneath. There's not much to them, there's a brake arm assembly you can see in there which is spring loaded and when you start the blades up that will remove the brake arm and brakes from the pulleys. This lever on the right is to adjust the height of the deck. And this lever is to engage and disengage the blades. The way these older decks work is simply by pulling the deck back, which then tensions the belt, and then in turn starts the blades. This also pulls the brake mechanism away from the pulleys, removing the brake from the deck. So that is it for this restoration I'm afraid, you'll have to stay tuned for more like this in the very near future and if you've got any suggestions at all then please feel free to comment below and also stay tuned and keep up to date with my new restorations coming soon to this channel by hitting the subscribe button. Until then, toodaloo.